Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it's just to join me today as I, well, look in the bucket of this well. This is the well that uh, I was trying... Oh, actually, this leads somewhere. That leads somewhere. That's gonna lead somewhere. Why didn't I see that before? Of course that's gonna lead somewhere. We had to rest here, apparently, to... I, I suppose I could have noticed this place before. We still haven't figured out a way to um, activate that particular... Um, that particular thing over there, and that's kind of a pain in the bottom, because I'm gonna need to go around, Either, if I can go over there, that's gonna be good, because I'm gonna try and make my way back there, I suppose maybe during daytime, or now that I, I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen with that tower, I need to open it, I need to figure out a way to do it, I just don't know, but anyway, let's look at the bucket first, you hold the bucket over to the side of the well and look into it, it's quite empty, clearly this well is not being used for a very long time, with some effort you get the handle of the well to turn and lower the bucket down into the well shaft, Okay, um, you lower the bucket all the way to the end of the rope, there is no splash be from below, it seems the well is dry after all. You turn the old creaking handle raising the bucket up to shaft, and now there's a huge spider in there. Yeah, you look in the bucket, a, a snake le leaps out at you from inside, and you spring back just in time to avoid being bitten. The bucket falls to the ground and a snake slithers out towards you, fangs bared. Is this one of the dreaded seven serpents? It seems very small. Wait a minute. Could it, could, 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 no, it can't be. So let's see, we have the water serpent, we have the earth serpent, we have the time serpent, the air, and the sun serpent. Now, to fight it here, this, uh, I don't think, I have no, I don't, I have no idea. How, 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 could, how could I know? I mean, I suppose it could be the water serpent, so, uh, but I can't use it, oh, I can use an item, yeah. You flip open your pack, um, uh, uh, quickly, okay, so poison, that probably will work, uh, throw the shakram, this is not the water serpent, none of these is actually, um, what I want, um, let's draw my sword and fight this, this serpent, yeah, you draw your sword to skewer the creature, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, these creatures, if I remember correctly, it's a Nate. oh man, uh, if I remember correctly, they're always... Oh, I was gonna say that they're always attacking, but they don't. The yellow snake looms up from the bucket. It has eight stamina. Um, spitting. You chop out wildly, hoping to chop the creature to pieces, but it slivers out of reach. It looms its terrible bite. It's gonna go for a power attack. And there we go. That was good. That was good. Let's see what happens. The yellow snake turns to you, uh, but you keep on its tail. You split the air with your sword, cutting it into uh, cutting into the less scaly skin of the snake's belly. The snake is weakening. It's gonna go for an attack, but it can't do very powerful. I don't think I'm gonna go with 1.9. How could you do that? Oh my God! Okay, let's try and use a different. Let's try and do what we did, because I want to go down into the bucket, oh, not into the bucket, down into the, um, down into the well, uh, so I'm gonna need to kill this snake, uh, it's, so I'm gonna cast a spell, because I'd rather, I mean, I could drink the antidote, I suppose, but uh, it's still gonna hurt me, uh, ooh, what, I have pop? I have pop? Does it work against it? We never use it, let's just use it, now that we're rewinding anyway, let's just cause explosions. You spin, you spin the constellation to shape around you over the stone pebbles. I am... Why would I put the pebble in the bucket? What? I'm fighting a snake? You put the pebble into the bucket very gingerly. Oh. Huh. You lower the bucket with the pebble in it. About halfway down the shaft, the rope jolts. The bucket explodes violently. The rope ignites and the firelight gleams for a moment off the crystal seam in the walls. And you see it has been damaged by the explosion, fragmented and cracked with several pieces blown out. Then the rope is gone. A single wisp of smoke rises from the well mouth and it is broken up by the wind. Something... This might be a better... I don't know. I, it's, it's really not what I wanted. The cast spell here... I could cast this, I could do that, that would be an interesting thing, but I don't want to destroy whatever is down there. Uh, so I'm going to keep, I'm going to do the same thing, I'm, I'm going to try and cast a spell for... Can I fight it? Okay, so in here comes, it seems very small, it doesn't seem very small at all! It, it seems terrible, let's see, well, let's yeah, let's go with the one of these, because it's going to go with the defense right there, and now I know. The second one is going to be a very, it disappears into the dirt. 
So it's gonna be a small attack. I'm gonna go with a 4.8. Oh, okay. That was another defense. Um, the yellow snake is retreating, but you won't let it escape. Fiercely, you lunge for the beast's neck, but it dodges back. It looms its mighty fangs. It's gonna go for a power attack right there, and I'm gonna go with an 8.1. 7.5 right there. Minus 4. The snake is weakening. I'm still gonna go with a power attack here. I suppose I'm gonna be able to get it. Bite the skin of my teeth and I kill it. Woo! You keep up the pressure, swinging up from a low crouch, and you aim to sever the snake's head. The snake hisses as it dies. You return to the side of the well. Okay, um, there's nothing down there. I can cast a spell, but why would I want to do this? That's the question, because, I mean, I got the fall floating in the air. I got the, I, I don't need to kill the snake if, if that is eh, what, what, all that is in here. I got the sun. Oh, now I can cast this. Yeah. Uh, you spin the constellation to shape around you, and then the sun jewel in your pack begins to emit a brilliant, blinding not light. Uh, I'm gonna put the sun jewel into the bucket. You drop the glowing jewel into the bucket, uh, and I'm gonna lower the bucket. The lower... Oh, yeah, now I can see in there. That's good. You lower the bucket all the way to the end of the rope. The light from the jewel paints the well walls with light as the bucket descends. You notice something gleaming in the walls of the well halfway down. That's the crystal that we saw, right? It's hard to see clearly from here, but it looks like it might be a seam of crystal embedded in the rock. It could be very valuable, but there's no way to dig it out from here. Uh, I'm gonna use the lo rope ladder to climb down, because I have it. You tie the rope ladder around the well house and toss it down into the well. Then you begin to make your way slowly down. We're going in there. Whee! You hold your position close by the crystal in the rock. The seam of crystal is quite beautiful. The soft rock walls are st studded with fists and lumps of green and blue jam glass. There must be a fortune down here, perhaps even a layered strata of pure wealth. If only the backlands could be mined by the king of Analand. Um, why would I use the Analand sword instead? Oh, it's the... Oh, because it's gonna break. Okay, let's use the Anilan Sword instead, then. Using your old sword awkwardly in the narrow confines of the well shaft, you dig a fistful of gems out of the wall of the well shaft. You cannot catch them all, and they fall, but thankfully land in the bucket a short distance below you. You have blunted the edge of the blade in the progress, however. That's fine. Uh, let's dig more. You keep digging, hoping to get more crystal from the rock wall, and you do, getting several crystals the size of skulls, but these are too large to hold while only holding on to the ladder. One tumbles from your arms, and you hear it smash a good three seconds later. Uh, so at the acceleration of 36 meters per second per second, we'd be talking at about... So what basically, that's really, we're basically talking about 15 meters, I think? So, so five, three, no... I don't know. I can't make the calculations in my head. That's uh, anyway. Uh, no wanted, f not wanting to risk the knot uh, at the well house. Un uh, at the well house, yeah, up there. Unraveling, you inch your way back up the shaft. Okay, something terrible might happen now. You pull yourself over the edge of the well. You untie your rope ladder and return it to your pack. You bring the bucket up the well. You check inside the bucket. Your sun jewel is inside, still glowing. The bottom of the bucket is also filled with uncut gemstones and glittering rock. The... It, no, it's just not rock, sto rock dust. But anyway, this hall must be worth scores of gold pieces. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take them all. You scoop up the gems from the pocket and you pour them gleefully into your money pouch. An excellent find. You retrieve your sun jewel and as well, it's glow fading. The gems are an assortment of different types of stone and will require an expert of s to sort, value, and cut them. But the sheer size of them is jaw-dropping. Several of are the size of eggs, and one is the size of a small cat. Holy crap, am I going to be able to carry all of that? Please, with your work, you strike uh, straight away from the well. Well, what what was in there? Does this guy know what it is? I don't want to go there. I want to leave. D does he know? I just probably gonna k try to kill me. I don't want to redo this. Uh, well, it's actually, if I if I have to, it's not too long. Okay, um, you clamber back up to the plinth. Let's go inside and talk to the guy. You step inside a temple. The floor space is quite empty, but the walls are decorated with long lines of strange hieroglyphs that remind you a little of the symbols decorated the. the that decorated the ancient shrine of your graceful lord, Korga, in Kerry. You cannot read them, but may be able to decipher them if you look more closely. By the way, can I pray? Thank you very much. Heal me up. Thank you. Um, 
Shala is here, his eyes closed, murmuring to himself. Suddenly, without warning, one of the pillars holding up the broken roof of the temple shears. The wall structurally sliding down on top of you. Didn't I just pray? Damn it. The old man yells somewhere close by, but you cannot get to him. I can cast a spell. No, I can't. Huh. You begin to cast a spell, but there is not enough time. The roof slides forwards and lands on top of you. You are still alive, but you are now trapped beneath, a, beneath an enormous pile of rubble. I'll try to help, calls Shala, dimly from outside of the, of the rubble pile. Somehow, it seems he has survived. Um, I'm gonna cast Big. I just want to see what happens. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna let this stand. At least I didn't die. Uh, let's go with a Big here, because that, I'm just gonna stand up and do my thing. You cast the spell... You cast the spell, quickly selling to the, uh, swelling to the height of a tree, but in such a small space, there is no room for the transition, and you end up terribly squashed. Just keep praying, Shallow advises. It worked for me. Uh, no, it didn't. You can shut the hell up. I'm not staying in your terribly broken temple. Screw you. Let's go back over there by the well. Just scoop up everything and uh, raise the bucket. We're good here. Look in the bucket and take the gems. Look at the gems, and we're off. See you later in your stupid broken temple. I'll be back, maybe. You leave the ancient temple behind, then quite suddenly you find yourself violently coughing. Oh. A cough? You weren't coughing a moment ago, of course. The steps are very dusty, but then you cough again and lift your hand to your mouth. You notice two vivid yellow pimples on the back of your hand. You st it's the yellow plague. You stare at your hand. It is the yellow plague. Clearly, the old man was infected and gave it to you when he hugged you in the cellar. Uh, yeah. You struggle on across the plain, feeling yourself growing weak and stread and all, uh, growing weak already. I'm gonna pray for a cure. You close your eyes and raise a prayer to Korga. Miraculously, the welts on your hand begin to fade, and you feel yourself getting stronger once more. Okay, let's eat some, um, something very, 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 very important. I have nine doses of this. It gives me three, which is really good, actually. Uh, this serves as food, I believe, and if he doesn't, I'm gonna eat another one later. Because uh, we're probably going to have to rest. We cannot go over there, which is a shame. So I could go over here and go over there, but that is going to force me to not go where I want to go. Because I want to figure out where that leads us. So don't do that. No, do this as straight as possible, because it, it uses up this thing. Uh, we could go there. You match on us, climb, climbing slightly. The air is stirs. And we'll go, yeah, but everything is good. Let's go down here, because maybe this is the key. I doubt it, but, well, we'll see. You walk on the ground, dropping a little. The rising winds pull at your hair and cloak. The sudden sound of voices to your right startles you. You spin around to see seven hooded shapes squatting on the ground, playing some sort of weird game, uh, chanting in a curious tongue. What? Oh, boy. That face does not look good. Uh, listen to the chant. You listen closely to the voices, then stiffen as you realize one is calling you by your name. We have awaited you, it breathes. You have made good time to us. We are the seven spirits. Come, join us. I'm gonna talk like this. They are probably not chanting when they say that, but, uh, um, I can't cast, I, I, if I can't see the future. Huh. You ra apparently not. You raise your eyes to the heavens, but there is nothing there. Strange. You have heard rumors of spots where no stars at all are in alignment, but you have never found one before. The figures beckon you towards them, into the very center of this magical darkness. I wonder if we could find one of them before, one of these places before, and um, and uh, it would say that you had found, uh, like the one where you found in so-and-so. Let's approach them. Where will you approach? What are these creatures? How do they know your name? Will they offer advice or are they dangerous? As their skull mask face suggests. The, spirit ri the spirits rise from the ground as you approach. I told you they were spirits. They look like ghosts. Um, as you approach, gliding sil silently through the air. Passing through one another as they mingle and encircle you, linking hands. Caution is understandable, whispers a single voice, or seven in tight unison. But fear us not. Um... How can you help me? We can give you knowledge. A chant we know will protect you from all harm. Okay, tell me the chant. The spirits begin to turn and dance around you, chanting in a whispered unison, but you cannot understand the words. Repeat, they hiss. Sing with us. Repeating words in a language you cannot understand is difficult. You try, but stumble over the first few lines. Oh, this is... Oh, boy. Arbil ma darbil. What the hell? Arbil ma darbil. 
Hmm. As they chant, you begin to feel the stars reappearing in the sky above you. Magic. Magic! In italicized font. So I'm really happy about that, because I can talk all languages now. At least if I remember which one it is. It's not the tell. Uh, although that, that that is such an awesome spell. I love that spell. Why did it have to go away, guys? Play the game yourselves and get to see that because I'm going to play the game myself later. And I'm going to get to see that. All I need right now is the one that... Uh, nope, mud is a terrible one. Is the one that allows me to know all languages. But I can't find it. Rap. Is that it? That is. Yeah. So let me just put my... my Green wig, green wig, hall. Yeah, let's see. Uh, grabbing the wig from your back, you put it on and weave your spell. Suddenly, the words of the chant resolve themselves into something you can understand. I call to be damned. I offer a sign. I call to be damned. Uh, no idols are mine. The words go round and round, over and over, building in force. With a wig on your head, it is almost more than you can that you can bear to listen. You keep listening, and the chant goes on and on. The clouds begin to churn in the sky, then a cloud, a loud crack breaks the stillness as a bolt of lightning skewers the place where the seven spirits stand. The light clears, and they have vanished. You look up. The sky overhead seems to be breaking. The dome of the sky is now a lidded eye, cracking open. Something like a clawed hand has hold of you and is pulling you towards the top of the low mound. The ground itself is transforming into a face, and you are walking into its wide-open smile. And of course, I only have one choice, so... Oh! You struggle and strain, but there is nothing to fight but the wind. Your heels score tracks in the dust. The force on you is like a hundred invisible hands. Then you are above the wide-open jaws of the face in the ground. This must be holy ground to some dread spirit long forgotten by the civilized peoples of the world. But you will not learn its name. You are not to be a follower. You are to be devoured. You raise the sword to swing, but stumble back under the weight of it. Your arms seem unable to lift a blade, but no. Looking down, you see your legs are suddenly thin, and your hands are thin and bony. Reaching up to your face, you find your hair is coming away in clumps, and wrinkles are spreading over your skin. The serpent face in the ground laughs. The jaws of time are inesca inescapable, it roars. Oh, that it's, that's why it cannot be defeated. But I have another thing the marsh goblins know. I call to be damned. I offer a sign. I call to be damned. No idols are mine. What can I... I can't do anything. You... Hmm. You look up to the heavens, intending to cast a spell, but you cannot see the stars anymore. Your eyes have grown blurry and unfocused, and the night swims as if you are underwater. You tumble to the ground and hear the snap as the bones in your hip and pelvis give out. The serpent shifts closer. I'm going to ask for mercy if I can. You open an, an, your mouth to cry out, and your teeth scatter to the ground. A moment later, you cannot see. Another moment, and you are nothing but a skeleton. You stare out through bone-dead eyes. You are nothing but cold bones. But then, the winds drop once more. The clouds roll back. The steps are clearing. You feel yourself becoming young once more, bones strengthening and skin tightening. Whatever was pulling you towards death has released its creep. You turn to see a gigantic shape lift into the ground and swoop away northeast. It leaves a strange trail as it flies, flies, and the wind from its movement knocks you to the ground. What? That was the Serpent of Time. What? Holy crap! You stagger backwards, glad to be alive and keen to leave this accursed place. I can't believe it! Seriously! That was awesome! And that's the serpent's path! It leads over there, we know where it is! So we have the serpent of time and we have two more serpents Which mean, and I don't remember which ones they are, they certainly aren't the sun I believe one of them might be the water, it's probably this one And that one over there is probably the earth So we have, uh, I think, one of these over here Um... Uh, this is going to be easy to defeat, and the water is also going to be easy to defeat. And then we have the, the time, but we don't know where the air and the sun are. That was lucky that we found it over here. I suppose we're going to need to find another serpent over here, but how? And wh how, how? There's a little small hut over there. Man, so many things. That was amazing. I love that. I love that so much. Okay, so the temple is still 
all broken. That's fine. We're gonna activate this, I suppose. We're gonna activate this. Let's see. Yep, yep, we're here. Well, it's now open. You set off across the steps with an, an easy stride, but the firm, dusty ground becomes spongy, and after a while, you are no longer walking on firm ground, but rather striding between waist-high weeds in a deep and stench-filled marsh. The... The marsh goblins! They are in the past. Okay. The sun continues to climb the steep sky. You approach the edge of the mountains and the base of an old, uh, an old stone tower carved from the cliff face itself. From the battlements of the tower protrudes a strange brass cylinder nestled... Yeah. I'm gonna knock on the door. You knock on the door. There's no reply. Okay. Enter the tower. You try the door. It is locked, but its wood is ancient and rotten and could... No. 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 You take a run up, then charge at the door, smashing straight through and tumbling to the floor inside. There we go. It was barred. But now it isn't. Or it wasn't before and... Ah! You pick yourself up to, off the ground, only to find yourself staring into the snarling jaws of a wolfhound. It is clearly half mad with starvation. There is no time and no choice but to fight. It is gonna be fine, guys. We're all good. I, I got scared a little bit, but that's because I'm a wimpy... Dude, uh, let's go with a 7.1. It's probably gonna attack me with all the strength that it has, and well, that wasn't too bad. It's probably gonna be able to go for a four, uh, probably 4.9 at most. The wolf hunt creeps towards you with the flags uh, across the flagstones, jaws dripping and fur shining wet. You arc your sword for its neck. It bounds, it bounds forward, only to run itself onto your blade, writhing and howling. It limps back. Bleeding heavily. Okay, it's not gonna go for a power attack, I don't think, but I'm still gonna go with this. And it may go one for the defense. We should be okay. You turn your grip about for a vicious blow. The wolfhound drops back. As the wolfhound grows weaker, it gets. its snarls get madder. That was good. That was really good. You twist your sword around for a vicious attack. The strike cuts deep as the wolfhound weakly opens its jaws to bite. You plunge your blade between its teeth and all the way down to its heart. The wolfhound howls, a gurgling, blood-soaked sound that rings inside the tower, and then it dies. Flawless fighting. You wipe your legendary sword and gasp for breath as you look around the room. The wide tower base is empty, except for a flight of spiral stairs leading up to the hatch in the ceiling overhead. You try to ignore the smell of wet blood that fills the chamber and search the gloomy arches under the spiraling staircase. In a forgotten corner, you unearth three gold pieces. Why would I want that? Sure. You take the coins and drop them into your purse. Huh. Was that good? I suppose. Let's go upstairs. No vines, please. You clamber up the spiral stair uh the spiral stairs, yes, to the hatch, and go through onto the roof of the tower. The cool wind of the steps hits you full in the face, snatching your breath away. The tower stands on the slope of one of the horns themselves, looking out over the wall of the steps. In the tower of in the top of this tower is another movable brass cylinder, like the last one you saw, set with a blue crystal. There are powerful, unusual stars here. Really? What kind of Unusual stars can I cast? Can I cast the SSS? That sounds a little... What, what's the SSS? I can't cast the SSS. Let's see what do we have. We have Doc, which is an interesting thing because it's going to heal disease. Uh, but I don't need that. It's going to heal me probably, but I don't want to... got the how. Why would I want the how? Huh. Anyway, we have the far. That's good. It's going to see the future. Uh, you sit cross-legged on the rock and put your palm on the orb of crystal cast the spell and everything changes. The world seems to disappear, replaced by a vision. A ring of tall, shadowy stones in a desolate waste. You stand at their center, holding above your head a long yellow feather taking from the colo taking, taken from some colossal bird. You are casting a spell of curious power. Um, okay, so... A ring of tall, shadowy stones in a desolate waste. And I have a feather on top of my face. The spell begins to take hold and the feather erupts into flame as though you held a fiery sword. The fire reaches down your arm and into your bones and you feel yourself swelling with great strength. The vision fades and the afternoon is drawing on. Okay, uh, let's see if I can cast another one, another spell. I don't care about the afternoon. Just draw on the afternoon and it should be fine. Um, uh, so what can I do? I got the, uh, the zip. That's, that'd be interesting. Why would I want that? I got the far, which is what I just saw, or I did. I got the how, I got the dock, okay, and all the rest are the same. Yeah, I probably should go for the dock, shouldn't I? Hmm. Let me look at my inventory here and, and and be able to tell whether or not the medicine is usable or something. 
so the medicine, is it here? I suppose it would be. It's a mag Is it a magical item? No, nope, it's not. Uh, this one over here. Message from Annaland. Compass, snake bite, whistle, flask of oil. Uh, no, this is a this is a strength potion, I believe. Um, I don't need that. I don't think I need. Can I drink it? You drink the potion and suddenly feel more skillful, but a moment later your hair is falling out in clumps. I think I, 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 yeah. I can only use it once, of course. Let's try that again. Top of the tower. Oh no, I'm gonna need to. Oh damn it. Uh, let's cast the spell again, the far, because you know why not. Uh, I'm kind of curious, and actually, now that we're doing this, let's go with the dog here and see if I can cast it multiple times. I probably won't, but let's see. You cast this. Oh, you cast the spell across your potion, and it begins to glow and fizz. Oh, what what potion? You knock back at the enchanted potion and feel much better. Oh, is it the one that I just took? Mystery potion. It, no, it's not. No, that's the, for the hair to fall in clumps. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. Let, let, let it fall. I, I'm just experimenting with things. No, that's not what I want. I want to go back. I'm going to cast another spell if I can. Uh, cast another spell. Let's see if I can cast the uh, dog again. What kind of potion is that? I can, can't I? Or at least, is he gonna let me? A, med a medicinal potion. Can I? That's not right. That's not right, is it? If I can get, like, if it's like some sort of where you can add water or something, because I I'm casting a spell here, right? It's magic. It's not. It's not the potion itself. It's it's my magic. So um, drink the potion again and just heal up to maximum. Uh, cast another spell. Let's just. I don't know how many potions I have, but it could be the, the 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 berry, the berry juice, right? I keep having it. Like, okay, let's try just one more time to see if um, if I have another one, because it could be the. Damn it! It is. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it's gotta be. This medicinal thing. Climb down. Okay, I just wanna. I, I'm gonna reload this, but I just wanna make sure it's the it's the rations. No, nope. magical items. Yeah, it's this thing. Okay, it's much. It, it keeps. That's good. I like that. Okay, let's repeat that. So basically, what that does is use up your um, your. Uh, it gives you extra an extra two, uh, healing because of the bloom berry juices. So I could, I could cast this on all of them and save them, and that actually might be a little bit better than what I'm doing. So, uh, yeah, I think I think that's that's gonna be a good one. You put the enchanted potion into your pack, but of course the spell fades and the potion returns to normal a few moments later. Ah, okay, well, uh, so how much does it heal me? For a lot. It's not for two, it's for three. It adds three to that. That is really, really powerful. But anyway, um, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Sorcery. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.